gas. It can kill you before you even realize there is a problem. Breathing apparatus provides a supply of safe, breathable air, but you must understand how to use the equipment, and it should always be close to hand, never more than one breath away. When drilling in certain areas of the world, poisonous gases that are sometimes odorless and colorless can contaminate the air. In our operations, the most poisonous gas is hydrogen sulfide, or H2S gas. The exposure threshold for H2S defines the maximum amount of the gas that you can breathe while working eight hours a day, five days a week, without any harm. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration has set the threshold at 20 parts per million, or ppm. Some regulatory agencies have adopted a limit of 10 parts per million. To give you an idea of how dangerous H2S can be, let's look at a chart showing the different degrees of toxicity. At 10 to 20 parts of H2S per million of air, you are safe for up to 8 hours of exposure, but there is an obvious and unpleasant smell. Actually, you can smell H2S in concentrations a good deal less than 10 ppm. At 100 ppm of H2S, you lose your sense of smell in 3 to 15 minutes, and your eyes and throat may begin to sting. At 200 ppm, you lose your sense of smell immediately, and both eyes and throat sting. When you reach 500 ppm, you are in critical danger. You begin to lose balance and your sense of reasoning. In 30 to 45 minutes, respiratory paralysis sets in. At 700 ppm, breathing will stop and death will result if you're not rescued immediately. If the concentration reaches 1000 ppm, you become unconscious at once and permanent brain damage may result. Because of these dangers, you must always be aware of how to handle an H2S encounter. When you arrive at the rig, check the station bill to find out where to go in an emergency. If there is no station bill and you don't know what to do, ask your tool pusher or driller. He'll be able to tell you. As a minimum, each rig should have four gas masks kept in the following locations. In the tool house on the rig floor, in the clothes changing house, in the engine area, and in other storage facilities around the rig, so that nobody in normal work routine is ever more than a few steps from a mask. Rigs working in known or suspected H2S environments will have enough self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs, for everyone on the rig, as well as some spares. Since regulations differ according to each rig and the territorial laws it falls under, you should check with your rig supervisor if you have any questions. You should also check with your supervisor if you have long hair, sideburns, a beard, perforated eardrums, and if you wear glasses or contact lenses. There are several makes of approved SCBA. They all provide safe breathing air for the user, and the techniques for use are similar. One type of unit used widely by Sedco Forex is the backpack, which provides 30 minutes of continuous operation when the 45 cubic foot cylinder is fully charged. This one is a Scott air pack, but these guidelines can be used for any mask of this type. First, check that the cylinder pressure gauge indicates full. Then, check the regulator hose connections. They must fit tightly at the cylinder valve. The basic method of putting the backpack on is the vest method. You swing the unit onto your back using the shoulder straps, as though you were putting on a jacket. 
buckle the chest strap and pull down on the side straps so the unit fits snugly into place. Then fasten and adjust the waist belt. The next step is to make sure that the mainline valve, this yellow knob, is open by turning it counterclockwise and that the bypass valve, this red knob, is closed by turning it clockwise. Open the cylinder valve one and a half turns and engage the valve safety lock. You can check this is engaged by attempting to close the valve. The alarm should ring briefly to tell you that the alarm system has reset itself and is working properly. Then check that the regulator pressure gauge is indicating full and that the reading is steady. Put the mask on chin first. Adjust the chin straps and then the temple straps. If necessary, adjust the forehead straps to ensure a good seal around the face. Check the mask and hose for leaks by closing off the end of the breathing tube with the palm of your hand. Inhale slowly and the mask should collapse towards your face. If not, you need to adjust the mask straps. Then, check the exhalation valve by breathing out. There should be no excessive back pressure and air should not escape through the facial seal. Now, connect the breathing tube to the regulator. An alternative way to put on the pack is the overhead method. This requires more practice but is quicker than the vest method. Watching it in real time, you can see that trained personnel can apply and operate the unit in less than 30 seconds. To put the unit on in the overhead method, grasp the back plate, lean forward and swing the unit over your head. Buckle the chest strap and let the unit slide onto your back. Fasten the other straps and put on the mask as you saw earlier. Whichever method you use, make sure you practice it regularly. There are no prizes for style. The only thing that counts is being able to do it quickly in an emergency. Now let's take a look at the heart of the unit the regulator. Airflow is controlled automatically with these two knobs. In normal use, the red knob, the emergency bypass valve, should be closed by turning it clockwise. The yellow knob, the mainline cutoff valve, should be opened completely by turning it counterclockwise. The Scott air pack can be switched between pressure and demand supply with this switch. When the switch is off, air is supplied to the mask only when you need it. This demand supply adapts the flow according to your physical activity. If you breathe harder, it works faster. With the switch in the on position, the regulator supplies a constant stream of air. This creates a pressure inside the mask so that all leakage is outward and no toxic gas can flow into the mask. This pressure supply is an important safety feature when there is not a good seal around the mask. However, bear in mind that it also uses up your air supply more quickly. When the air pack is empty, Replacement of the cylinder is quick and easy. Just uncouple the mask hose from the regulator and replace the cylinder. Always use air. Do not use pure oxygen. If your rig has the proper facilities, the air pack cylinders can be recharged on site. If not, don't attempt to do this yourself, but send the empty cylinders back to the manufacturer for recharging. Assuming you have recharging facilities, the procedure is fairly simple. Connect the empty air pack cylinder to the storage cylinder 
with the lowest pressure, making sure that the pressure is still higher than the air pack cylinder. Open the valve on the air pack cylinder and then the valve on the selected storage cylinder. When both gauges are equal, move to another storage cylinder and continue until the air pack cylinder is full. A typical air pack consists of six major parts. A face piece assembly equipped with headbands, exhalation valve and breathing tube. A regulator that meters and controls airflow to the breathing tube. A high pressure hose that links the regulator to the air supply. An audible low pressure alarm or audilarm. A high pressure cylinder to store the supply of compressed air. And a harness assembly for mounting the apparatus on the user's body. These air packs are easy to look after and if the gas alarm goes off you'll be glad you did. Start by visually inspecting the equipment for worn or damaged rubber parts. If nothing needs replacing, clean the mask assembly using warm soapy water. Rinse the breathing tube by flushing water through it and letting it flow onto the mask lens. Now disinfect the mask with an ammonia solution. Three parts water with one part ammonia or if ammonia is not available, an alcohol solution. Rinse again in clean water and air dry. The lens can be polished by applying a plastic cleaner to the inside and outside. Use a damp sponge to clean off any dirt on the other parts of the equipment and make sure everything is dry before returning it to its storage case. The gas masks should be inspected at least once a month. Again, start with a visual inspection of the storage case and equipment. Make sure it is all there and in good condition. Check the cylinder pressure. If it is below 2216 PSI, it needs recharging or replacing. Take the equipment out of the case and open the cylinder valve to check the regulator gauge pressure. Put the face piece on and adjust the head harness straps. Check the face piece breathing tube and exhalation valve by inhaling with your palm blocking the end of the breathing tube. Check the regulator performance by plugging in the breathing tube and inhaling deeply and quickly. The regulator should supply a full flow of air to match the deeper breathing. Unplug the breathing tube and close off the cylinder valve. The regulator gauge should indicate full pressure. If it begins to drop, the regulator and hose assembly are not holding the trapped pressure and you've got a leak. Before storing the equipment, let the trapped air between the high pressure hose and the regulator escape by carefully breathing down the unit. Putting the equipment away carefully will make it much easier to use when you need it. Place the cylinder in the case with the back plate upwards. Then secure the chest strap and regulator in the corner. Make sure the waist belts are open and all the straps are fully extended. Finally, place the mask in front of the case with all the head straps extended. Gas masks may also be wall mounted, similar to fire extinguishers, which makes them easy to inspect and use. If a gas emergency occurs, it's essential to act quickly. This video may make using air packs look easy, but it's not that simple when you're in a hurry. Remember, to put on the unit, check the pressure gauge and regulator hose. Check the regulator knobs, cylinder valve, alarm and pressure gauge. 
adjust the head straps. Put your chin in first and pull straps tight. Check the hose by inhaling and exhaling. Connect the tube to the regulator. Knowing where to find the equipment and how it works is a good start. But most important of all, you must be able to put the equipment on quickly. In an emergency, you won't have time to think about it. So the best bet is to practice as often as possible. One day, you may be glad that the means of survival is just one breath away.